I am on the road home from my Welland duplex project and I wanted to share my thoughts for the week, my learnings for the week. Um, let's start off with the best news yet. My tools were stolen. So I think it was one of the trades that I hired. I can't prove it though. So I'm up the creek without a paddle. Probably about $700 for the tools, circular saw, reciprocating saw, uh, Dremel, dr uh, driver, drill, six batteries, and a charging station, charging pack. So, lessons for the week. Um, you don't really know who you can trust until you build a long enough relationship with them. And even at that point in time, I suspect there's still people who have been screwed over by people they trust and have known a long time. I gave access to the property to three people, two of which I trust, one of which I don't, and one of which I didn't trust in the beginning. But I really felt, because I always have the choice, but I felt I didn't have the choice because I needed to get this person in the project doing their work so that I could move along. They've done their work. Um, I've asked them if they've taken the stuff. They've said no. I was going to say yes. What a great question, right, Ian? And I'm at this point where I don't have the tools. I have to replace my tools so that I can keep working on the project. Um, it'll probably be $800, $900 to replace all this stuff. Very frustrating situation. situation and I've learned from it. I have my tools in my car now. Um, I don't drive a truck, so I don't really have a lot of space for tools. And if I need to pick up materials or whatever from a big box store, I'm not going to have as much space to do so. Um, but that's the lesson learned, I guess, is keep your tools with you um, if you can. The other thing is to probably not give access to as many people. Three is not really a lot, but um, when you can't prove who's the culprit, uh, you, have, you can't do anything about it. The other thing is maybe getting security cameras for the property is a good idea so that you can see who leaves with your stuff. Um, two solutions, I suppose. In my property, I, I haven't figured out the internet situation yet, uh, but I could even get a cell phone and put a data plan on it, pay 50 or 60 bucks for that, and set up some cameras to a, the Wi-Fi network that the phone would be spitting out. And you know, safeguard the house a little bit more. Who's to say that they don't, you know, go in somewhere where you don't have cameras covering or that you can't read the license plate or you can't see who it was. You know, there's all sorts of situations, but at least it's a deterrent and hopefully that would help. Um, just a really crappy situation. Personally, I feel obviously like betrayed by somebody, um, an invasion on my space. Not that it was like a break and enter, but you know, I trusted somebody and probably shouldn't have and they stole my stuff. So that's a lesson for this week. Um, the other thing is I've just dug up the basement bathroom with uh, my buddy Tony and we used <clears throat> a jackhammer to do that. My uncle recommended a circular saw, a concrete saw, which might have been a better solution, I'm not certain. But it was, um, it went well with the jackhammer. It took probably about four hours to get the basement plumbing cavities dug up. Uh, the trenches, that's the word I'm looking for. And the plumbers will come in on Tuesday, currently Sunday, and they'll do their, their plumbing work. Um, it's frustrating when you're trying to do some of the work yourself to save some money um, and then your tools get stolen but then also when you're trying to do the work yourself to save some money um, I'm pretty capable I understand a lot of construction things but when you get into like my situation with the plumbing in the basement uh, the plumbers are gonna have to connect however they want to connect their their T's and their um, vents and all that stuff so I'm trying to do my best based on what they've told me to lay out or to, to cut out but then you always run through the questions in your mind of, is this going to be good for them? Am I even helping? In this situation, I've dug up most of the concrete that they're going to need moved, if not all of it or more, but you just don't know. And so 
hopefully the plumbers are reasonable, right? Or who, hopefully whoever you deal with is reasonable and they don't say, oh, well, I got to do a whole bunch of more work and then they have to go rent a jackhammer and they have to do the work themselves and charge you 60 70 $80 an hour. Um, but these are the things I run through in my head wondering, you know, if there's going to be further problems down the road because I'm trying to save myself the money. Um, basically, the difference between the plumbers digging up the concrete and refilling it back in was about uh, 800 bucks. And so I figured if it was myself and I hired a buddy and got a jackhammer rental and then filled the concrete back in, we're probably, I mean, I'm four hours now. I imagine it will probably be four hours roughly to fill it back in. So for eight hours, um, essentially they'd be charging me $100 an hour. And so I'm going to be probably, let's say, 300 bucks with the rental and labor not including my labor to uh, do this work. So I saved myself 500 bucks, which is pretty good. However, I gotta do that, then I have to do something else, and my time is limited, like anybody. So you have to decide what you wanna put your time into to save the money, or you can just decide to spend a little bit more money and let the professionals do absolutely everything, um, but it's gonna cost you more that way. I also like doing the work myself a little bit, because I enjoy you know, construction or creating something or building and having my touch or having done some work on the property, uh, there's a sense of accomplishment there. But um, there's also days where I feel like I don't wanna do any construction anymore. My goal isn't to be a contractor, it isn't to be doing the work. Um, it's to be the investor creating value employing people, uh, providing nice homes for people to live in, managing tenants, finding deals. That's really where I want my skill set to continue to evolve. Um, but I do like doing some of the work and so I make sure that I'm on site, but I can't do it all. So the lessons for the week to recap. Try not to get your stuff stolen. How can you avoid that? Security cameras, taking your tools with you, not leaving valuables laying around. Um, not giving access to the property to too many people. Other lesson for the week is if you enjoy doing some of the work, remember that you can do the work and you'll save yourself some money, but you are spending your time there. Uh, the reason I'm going home and it's still daylight, it's uh, 3.20 currently on Sunday, is because my family's visiting, my sister's here, they're going back to um, Spain Monday, and I was just thinking, this isn't what I signed up for. Um, I wanna spend time with my family and my friends, and I'm totally okay sacrificing time to work on the project. And it's not like it's absolute drudgery to, to be working on it. But if I have people around that I care about and I want to spend time with, um, I need to be with them. That's the, that's the whole pur purpose of investing, to create that freedom, uh, to do what you want, when you want, and with who you want. And today I was at the house and I had to get the plumbing trenches dug this morning. I knew I had to do that. But after that, I didn't do too much more besides pack my tools up and uh, start heading home because I realized that um, I wanted to be with family and friends. And uh, I guess that's the last lesson for the week. Make sure that you remember why you started, remember why you're doing it, uh, and remember where the investing journey is taking you. So hopefully this, uh, hopefully these experiences I've had prevent you from making some of the mistakes and also to keep certain things in mind when you're uh, investing. That could be real estate, that could be a business, that could be anything. Uh, you're investing your time, your money, and your energy, and those are pretty important resources that you have. So that's it for this week. It is January 5th. We start, um, the plumbers come on Tuesday, January 7th to get that rough-in plumbing done. I got an inspection tomorrow morning to ask my inspector a couple questions and the project continues. We're just over a month in, we've made good progress. The first three weeks were really fast. Um, we've had Christmas and New Year's and a wedding and a whole bunch of other stuff going on since the third week, so basically that fourth and fourth and a half week, which has really slowed the project down. Um, but hopefully not too many hiccups to come and we can stay on budget, which uh, we're not doing too bad on, but it's definitely gonna cost a little more than expected and stay on the timeline. 
So that's it. January 5th. Over and out.